On this episode, I make and install the foot plates, along with their supports. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. Before we make the floors, we need some support. This will be some small angles fitted to the frame plates. I've previously made small angles from solid. This worked pretty well, but took quite a lot of time. So this time, I thought we'd make them out of some 25mm equal angle offcuts. The first step is to face off the outer faces. I do this in the mill using a 50mm carbon insert face mill. Once it's faced off, it's over to the bench to deburr it with a file. Then we'll head back to the mill and reduce the size. For this I use a 12mm end mill. It's worth noting, I'm currently machining the full length of the offcut, which will be cut into several pieces shortly. This allowed me to make a decision on what to cut once the rust was removed, and if the rust had been too deep I can avoid those areas. Obviously if I've been working from new material, oh, this wouldn't have been a problem. Once the angle's been cut and deburred, it's back to the mill. I zero the z-axis on the parallel that I have in the vise. This gives me an accurate height of the angle. I reduce the angle to size using a 12mm roughing end mill. Once the angle is down to size, the next step is to deal with the inside. For this I'm using a 2.5mm radius cutter, which has a 5mm diameter. I use this in a couple of passes to remove any rust and clean up the inside faces, before facing the ends to size. With the angles all made, I need to drill some holes to match the holes in the frame plates. For this I use the digital readout to locate the holes with the dimensions from the original frame drawings, starting with a spotting drill followed by the drill size required. With the holes drilled, these can then be test fitted in place. Right, now we can get onto the sheet metal of the footplate. Today I'm going to be using some half millimetre galvanised steel sheet. I thought about using thicker material, or even brass sheet, but it's really unnecessary, as these don't take any load, and the remainder of the frame is steel. I mark out the layout on the galvanised sheet, using a carbide tip scribe. I follow these up with a black marker line for the rough cuts, which I then make with the hand shear. Any smaller cuts are then made with the tin snips. Once the sheet metal is cut, I lay out the holes, which are then punched using an automatic centre punch, and then drilled on the drill press.
once the holes are drilled, they're deburred, then they can be transferred to the foot plate supports. For this, the foot plates are held in place with some clamps and the holes transferred using an automatic center punch. The supports are then removed for drilling. I tried drilling these in situ, but that's just a recipe for broken drill bits. The holes are all tapped with a thread, which will avoid the need to use nuts. I use a spring tapping guide to align the tap. The foot plate supports are then reinstalled. This is where using screws on the frame instead of rivets has become a real advantage. Being able to remove a part and reinstall it as required. This is especially important as my drawings are less developed than an established set of drawings which have been built many times before. The foot plates are fixed down using M2.5 button head screws. You'll also notice I've left the cutout on the side. This aligns with the pocket in the side tank, which provides access to the workings. You may have noticed that the foot plates extend over the buffer beams at either end. This is because there's timber buffer beams to be installed, and the rear also has a support angle, which was used to extend the foot plate in the cab. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you next time.